Hello, and welcome into ShopFix, a community joined together for the love of woodworking. My name is William, and today I want to introduce you to a veteran totem pole carver and explore the art of woodworking. I did measurements from the sketch, and I drew one side on, and I traced it and flipped it over, and drew the other side on, and all while I'm doing that, I'm sort of imagining where I need to make, start making my cuts, like where I need to start making my chainsaw cuts. And even though I'm drawing, I'm always thinking about how the sculpture is going to look inside the pole. So like a lot of these details are going to be cutting right off um, when I start roughing out, but I need to draw it just so I can sort of imagine it in, in the wood. The piece that I worked on for this video is called Storytellers Have Big Mouths. The reason I chose to style it the way I did was because I had never done a sculpture where the figure sort of popped off the wood and I'd never done a raven like a full, like flying raven on a total move before either. So it was a couple elements that I'd never done before. What I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna make a few initial cuts. So basically I'm just gonna probably rough in the head a bit and do a few cuts for the raven. Luke Purnell is an artist of the Haida and Nisga heritage who through the use of traditional techniques from the Northwest Coast investigates contemporary social issues. Purnell also simultaneously acknowledges the historical implications of his method of working within his practice. Traditional Northwest Coast art was centered on the convergence of intangible and material wealth in individuals' rights and privileges and the objects that represented them. Parnell's work continues to address ideas of rights, ownership, and privilege in the context of his own experience. Parnell has been a professional artist for over 10 years. Having graduated from Emily Carr with distinction, Parnell is a recipient of the 2012 Windsor Gallery Graduate Student Award. He has exhibited work across Canada with recent contributions at Transportation and Renewal at the Seymour Gallery in 2013 in Vancouver, and another one at the Windsor Gallery in 2014, and a featured work at Windsor Gallery in 2015 entitled Concurrent. His work is included in notable collections such as the National Gallery of Canada and private collections across Canada. Parnell is currently an instructor at Emily Carr University of Art and Design. Additionally, Parnell was a recipient of the 2016 BC Creative Achievement Awards for First Nations Art, an award that celebrates artistic excellence in both traditional and contemporary visual art. You hollow at the back of a total bowl because it helps it uh, dry or see it a little more evenly. The thicker parts will dry slower than the thin parts and it leads to cracking. And it's a big piece of wood so it'll always crack but it just helps it crack less and weight. Obviously it weighs less. Totem poles serve as important illustrations of family lineage and the cultural heritage of the native peoples in the islands and coastal areas of North America's Pacific Northwest, especially British Columbia, Canada, and coastal areas of Washington and southeastern Alaska in the United States. The poles are traditionally carved from highly wrought resistant cedar, especially giant cedar or western red cedar, which eventually decay in the moist rainy climate of the coastal Pacific Northwest. Because of the region's climate and the nature of the materials used to make the poles, few examples carved before 1900 remain. Noteworthy examples, some dating as far back as 1880, include those at the Royal British Columbia Museum in Victoria, the Museum of Anthropology at UBC in Vancouver, and the Canadian Museum of History, as well as the Totem Heritage Center in Alaska. My work is carved a little deeper than traditional Haida. 
but a lot of the hydrocarbons nowadays carve pretty deep. If you looked at an old hydrotonum pole, a lot of times the figures will only be about two or three inches deep. So the carver won't carve any deeper than that. So it's a little bit more round than like say like Shimshan and Nishka carving where the old totem poles are more humanistic. And so they carved a lot deeper so that the figures look a bit more human. Like the arms and the legs, you know, have fingers and they're sort of shaped like a human figure. Whereas with the old hydro poles, it's much more design oriented. So, you know, an arm will look like a, a split U form and the legs will be sort of similar and the, and the hands will be sort of pretty stylized, sort of blocky rather than sort of human, looking like human hands. And, you know, and also the eyes, the eyes are more, they're more, they're more like panels, panels sort of stretched around a pole. Uh, whereas nowadays, if you look at a lot of hydro work, it's the same, but it's evolved quite a bit since the old days.